Hi everyone, thanks so much for being here. My name is Kat and I make houseplant videos here on Good and Planty. If you just so happen to absolutely love this video, please consider liking it, commenting, subscribing, or following me on Instagram. All of these things help me grow my channel like a plant. Today we're going to be talking about what to do if you either bring home a plant or neglect a plant and then you realize it looks like this beautiful b-roll you are seeing on the screen and how you can bring it back to this a very healthy luscious beautiful plant today i'm going to be kind of doing a demo specifically on a cane begonia but the good news is a lot of the decisions i'm making and techniques i'm using will apply to a very wide range of plants including philodendron Syngodium, pothos, all that good stuff. I'm kind of excited for this video because I feel like I'm doing like an HGTV makeover plant edition. So <laughs> please just let me enjoy this and hopefully you have some fun in watching me transform a very crispy, sad looking, dirty plant to a very happy, thrivy, full plant. This plant that I have with me today is a plant that I pulled from the floor of Lowe's, it was like under a shelf in the back corner. Wasn't getting the light it needed. It was in some really gross soil and I knew that it was the perfect plant to do a rehab video with. The first thing I decided to do was clip off any very clearly dead or damaged foliage because that is not serving anybody anything. <laughs> If anything, maybe it's just introducing more pests and bacteria to the plant. So just go ahead, you can go in with some shears or some scissors and just snip away at whatever is looking kind of crusty. I felt like it was better to just cut off anything a little bit icky and let the plant start a little bit fresh. And then of course I took off whatever healthy growth had broken off and propagated that. You don't have to do that for every little bit that you take off the plant, but some of the pieces that were breaking off looked very healthy to me and had nodes, so I'm just gonna go ahead and propagate it. And you will see after this step, honestly, the plant already looks a lot better just because you got rid of the dead stuff. After you do all that, you will probably be a little bit less overwhelmed with the state of your plant. So the next thing I advise for you to do, especially if this is a plant from a big box store, is to check the plant very thoroughly for pests because even a plant that didn't have pests before and was neglected for a long time, you'd be surprised how fast that they can get pests. So if you're new to houseplant pests, really all I do is check the upside of the leaf, I think it's called, and the underside, the stems, you know, all of the little lobes, make sure that it's all pest free. Kind of just look for anything that looks like black spots or white spots and is maybe moving. If you need extra help, you can pull out your phone flashlight or a regular flashlight and it's usually a little bit easier to find them that way. I was very lucky with this plant. I was kind of expecting to find a pest or two, but the only issue that I found was fungus gnats. They were kind of intense, but that is definitely one of the easier pests to get rid of and they aren't super harmful to the plant. I wasn't super worried about it, but I definitely wanted to address it. I knew it was fungus gnats, by the way, because there were literally flies just <laughs> bursting out of the soil and in the thick of the foliage, so it was kind of clear to me that it had fungus gnats. It was also during this time that if I found any other kind of questionable leaves, I just snipped them off. Here's where things can get a little bit messy. The next step for me was to take the plant out of the pot and check on the roots and just get rid of that nasty soil that had, without a doubt, plenty of fungus gnat babies. So just go ahead and squeeze it out of the nursery pot and give a good look at whatever roots you're working with. Mine was slightly root bound, but nothing too intense. And overall they did look pretty healthy. So that was great. I didn't have to worry about root rot. However, the soil was clearly not very rich in nutrients and was very heavily peat based. Even though it's a begonia and they do like a little bit of moisture, I knew that I had to just start fresh with the soil, not only because of the fungus gnats, but also because I wanted to provide a little bit of a more nutritious and aerated soil. Take off any little dead, dying, brittle roots and just kind of make your way through until majority of the soil is off. I did find those, I forget what they're called, like gardening fabric or something. I found those wrapped around the base of the roots and I personally really 
prefer to rip them off. I'm sure I did some damage to the root system by doing that, but I had plenty of issues with that retaining way too much moisture and keeping the soil around the root ball really compact. So that was a personal preference. I decided to take it off even though it did risk some damage to the roots. However, you can do what you want. You can see in this video very clearly how soggy and compacted that soil was in there. That's kind of like why I did it personally. That kind of proves my point. But again, feel free to do whatever you want to do. You can just leave it as is if you feel comfortable with that. So then go through, clean off more soil, rip off more roots, all that good stuff. And eventually I was left with all of the different pieces of the plant pretty cleaned off of the soil. You don't have to go too crazy. I was honestly really surprised with how healthy that root system looked. And for some reason, it really reminded me of like the human body's nervous system. <laughs> I don't know why. That was immediately what I thought of when I saw that, but that's a side note. Then after that, I think I rinsed it under some water. If I didn't do that, I really should have, but I don't have footage of it to prove that I did it. So I'm just gonna say that you should do that. And that's just gonna help with some dirt and pest removal and all that stuff. Then go ahead and clear off your little workspace. And it's time to repot your plant in a new home. Now, this whole like repotting thing, it's kind of up to you depending on what kind of plant you have. If it's a big box store plant that you are bringing back into your home and you want to revive, definitely repot. But if it is a neglected plant that you've had in your collection for a while, then you can kind of choose if you think it's worth it to repot this plant in fresh soil or maybe you can top dress you know it's really up to you there's different ways to play with this but this is a more severe case so i went ahead and repotted it i used some pretty airy soil it was a mixture of black gold potting mix with some perlite and orchid mix and i think that the black gold potting mix already has worm castings in it so i don't have to worry about the nutrients so go ahead and place your little plant pieces in there make it look all pretty arrange it how you want and you're pretty much good to go on that front. I really like doing this because again I improved the plant's environment but also I was able to rid of all of those fungus gnat things. <laughs> if you propagated some pieces like in advance this is also a good chance for you to pot in the propagations with the mother plant but I did this all in one day for you so I am not able to do that here. But that is an option in case you were interested in doing that. All right and then the last exciting step is cleaning your leaves. When you have a plant that is neglected or brought home from a big box store odds are the leaves are going to be disgusting and <laughs> have some kind of buildup, whether it be dust or hard water spots or maybe again a pest issue. You really want to make sure that you kind of give the leaves a fresh start and that they're able to soak in as much sun as possible, be clean just for the sake of being clean, and that their stomata is free from, I don't know, dirt and disgusting stuff. Their stomata allows them to transpire properly, so that's important. Personally, what I do, there's tons of different ways to <laughs> clean the leaves of your plants, but I have a certain mix that I like to use. I'll link it up above and it is a neem oil solution emulsified with some dish soap. So it's a really great pest preventative and it really does break down a lot of different kinds of dirt including hard water stains. That's what I like to use and then I spray it all over the plant. I let it sit on the plant for a little bit and then I go in with a microfiber cloth and I just kind of clean off the leaves, you know, as, as one does. I do wear gloves when I do this because for some reason, the feeling of microfiber cloth, like, it just does something to me. I don't know if anyone else feels like this, but I hate the way it just like gets caught on any little like imperfection on my hand. I don't like the feeling of it, so. I wear gloves. I also don't like the smell of neem oil, so I wear gloves, but that's a personal decision. So go ahead and clean off your little leaves, and guess what? Your plant is pretty much good to go. I wanted to give it an optimal growing condition, basically, so I did put this plant in my little greenhouse. In that greenhouse, it gets grow lights for 12 hours on, 12 hours off, and because it's an enclosed environment, there is pretty high humidity, so this plant was very happy with that. And one week later, I was left with this beauty. I did put a sticky trap in the pot and that kind of caught any remaining fungus gnats. There's three on here right now, so it did do some work. And over the past week, it kind of bounced back from that intense treatment and it even gave me some new leaves. So that's exciting. You can see them here. 
This is a new leaf. I have some on some of the stems I cut off. There's a ton over here. And some of these were growing in when I had already brought this plant home, but some of them I think are new. So that's pretty exciting. So yeah, now we have a very happy plant. It went from a crusty, sad little big box store plant to a plant that I'm very proud of in my collection. I also swapped out the pot. I tried to make all of my pots white, so I did swap the pot out too, and I think it helps have like the pretty little leaf color pop a little bit more. So that was also part of the transformation. That's gonna be it for today's video. Thank you all so much for watching. I hope you had some fun watching me transform this plant. You can absolutely apply these, I don't know, steps to whatever plant you are struggling with in your home. So hopefully that was helpful. Please subscribe if you don't already and wanna see more planty content from me. I would really appreciate that. And I will see you in my next video. Bye.